My name is Heather McPherson and I am a senior science teacher in a large public school in Montreal, Quebec. I have been teaching science for 26 years and in the last eight years there's a new reformed science curriculum that was introduced into Quebec, which has required that teachers deliver their lessons in a more engaging fashion and also anchor their lessons using a problem-based learning. So in the, I've been trying to rewrite parts of the curriculum to really align with the curriculum that we have in Quebec. Inquiry-based learning is when teachers engage students by asking questions, the students respond to the questions, we elicit their thinking by probing questions, and we try to orient students to each other's thinking. So every class that I teach, I would start off with about a 10, 15 minute inquiry based on previous work that we've done in the class or eliciting new information. The problem that I've chosen for this article was the material science. In the past, before I started, before I developed this section, students found material science dull. We're looking at plastics, metals, composites, um, and just how they're made, how they're degraded and then what needs to be done to protect them to increase their longevity. That's the core part of the curriculum. What I wanted to do is find a way to make this material more interesting. So we still teach the material science component but then I link it to global issues. So the global issue is the problem of garbage and also carbon footprints. Um, I start the unit with the slide on the background where we look at the Great Pacific Gyre where we have a young boy floating in a pile of garbage, which is tiny bits of plastic that are concentrated because of the ocean currents. And then others, other wildlife that are, that are facing uh, certain death because of all the plastics in the ocean. After I've introduced the topic, we, uh, we do the material science and then we link it to uh, our carbon footprint, our global footprint. I found a very useful carbon footprint calculator on the internet, which is based for probably grade six to eight level, but using it in grade 11 meant that it was engaging. Uh, students were able to do it quickly so that it wasn't terribly complicated, and they had a lot of fun with it. Once the calculator is calculated, you can actually compare the, the carbon footprint of people in the school or nationally or internationally. So I think the students got a lot, of, a lot of information out of it. Another project that we do to engage the students within this unit is I have them make a poster and they are role playing um, as if they were consultants for the high school of Green Club. I used to be in charge of the Green Club so it was a useful way to combine the two endeavors. The kids would make a poster explaining what the problem is with plastic why there's too much plastic out there. What's the problem with plastic water bottles? Do we really need plastic water bottles? Or they could work on metals. How are metals used? Where does metals come from? How do we, where do we get metals? What are the ores that we extract the metals from? How do we recycle them? Do we recycle them? What is the energy required to recycle? So overall, I've tried to make the problem of materials into uh, situated in garbage and carbon footprint. I've noticed that this, this unit now has become engaging and it's something that I look forward to teaching every year because the students really, really engage in the topic.